Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to episode 4 of my Ask Matt series where I answer broader topic questions suggested by you. Today's topic is going to be about measuring and marking tools, which ones I use and how I use them in my work. So let's head over to the bench and we'll get started. So here we are at the bench. I've got all my measuring and marking tools laid out here and we'll just kind of talk through them as we go. The first things I'm going to start with are the squares. I have these four. I have two combination squares, a 7 inch and a 12 inch as well as a, a six inch engineer square and a little, I think this is a four inch engineer square. Now I use my combination squares a lot, um, mostly just for measuring in and layout. I don't really use them as squares. I know that's kind of counterintuitive, but these are um, cheaper ones from the home center. And even though I've checked them by, you know, drawing a line on a board, flipping it over and drawing a line again, the lines line up, but they're not, that's still not square enough for me. I don't really trust that as much as I do my engineer square. So if I'm actually looking to draw a square line or square something up or check something for square, I'll use these. And you can get these pretty much anywhere. The small combination square is the one I use the most. I use it for like laying out mortise and tenons and things like that. Things where I need to, you know, reference a parallel edge basically so I can ride the, the body of the square up against the workpiece and then mark along the blade. Now the next thing we'll talk about are the marking knives. I use marking knives all the time. Um, the one thing that I can give any beginner or anybody trying to get into woodworking any little piece of advice is stop measuring things. The more you measure, the more you put error into your work um, because you're depending on the accuracy of your measurements to dictate the accuracy of your fits. So whenever possible, mark directly from the pieces you're trying to measure something to fit. So if I was trying to fit um, maybe like a panel into a case, for instance, like a shelf into a case, I would not measure that to get a perfect fit. I would take the, the, the stock for the panel, butt it up against one end, use my marking knife to mark exactly how long it needs to be. I don't really care what the actual length is, but that's the number it's gonna get, but that's the mark where it's gonna get cut on exactly. So I use these a lot for you know, marking pieces to fit, and I also use them a lot for marking out my joinery, uh, especially on um, my dovetails, my mortise and tendons, things like that. I have three different kinds here. I've got a large and a small marking knife from File, and I also have this Veritas marking knife as well. Now, I, before I had uh, this one, I had just these ones, and before I had these ones, I just had the small one. And I like these a lot, but once I got this one from Veritas, this one is by far my favorite. I absolutely love the, the long, thin blade. This allows you to get into a lot more tighter spots, and the nice thing about this one is it's crazy cheap, well compared to these ones. This is about 10 bucks, and I think these ones are about 25 or 30. So this is my favorite marking knife. Also it doesn't roll, <laughs> so I can't roll off the bench. Now kind of going along with the joinery, I have two marking gauges. I have a wheel style um, marking gauge, and I also have a cutting gauge. Now the difference here is that this wheel style it just has a little carbide wheel on the end that just makes a mark on the piece of wood. This one here has an actual blade in it, so that actually cuts the fibers of the wood, which I prefer personally. I know some people like these better, I like these better, that's just personal preference. Um, these I use a lot when I lay out my dovetails, so if I want to set the thickness of a piece of wood onto another one, I'll set my gauge to the thickness and I can run the line on the board. And that gives me a nice shoulder line to reference off of. I also have a really cheap tea bevel. I use this anytime I'm, I'm trying to do any kind of things with angles. It's nice to be able to take an angle from one thing and transfer it to something else. So if I wanted to transfer an angle from a workpiece to the saw blade, for instance, I can do that. I can set the angle on the piece and then take this over to my table saw, for instance, tilt the blade till it matches or the miter saw and then make my cut. Next thing here are my dividers. I have a few of these. These are just a couple of ones that I grabbed. Um, I also have the ones where you can put the pencil in them but I use these a lot as well. This goes back to that measuring concept. The, least, uh, the less you measure in your work, the better. So if I'm trying to divide out anything, I'm gonna be using my dividers. If I need to make um, you know, an even spacing of anything, I'll use these to divide out that space evenly, and then I have a nice center line for all of my pieces that I'm trying to divide out. Um, this is really nice if you wanna make symmetrical dovetails by hand, you can divide out the space and then draw your dovetails that way. Um, or if you're trying to divide out a space for some dividers or shelves, this works really well. I also use these for drawing curves or arcs as well. Uh, they work great for that. 
I do have the pencil style ones. We can put the pencil in here and draw it that way so you have a pencil line. But I still prefer to draw it with uh, one of these styles where they have the actual points. The nice thing about drawing an arc with the, with the points and then cutting to that line is that the sever and the fibers on the board allows you to see exactly when you get to that line. So if, you're, if you rough cut at the bandsaw and you're going to the spindle sander to sand back to the line, you can really tell exactly when you've gone far enough. I have this one here is a little beefier. It's pretty stout. Uh, this one is really flimsy and I got this one was a lot cheaper but um, it's a little lighter duty style uh, but I definitely prefer this one here because it's just beefier. The next thing I have here is a caliper. This is a digital caliper. Um, it's really handy when you need it. I don't really I know a lot of people use these things a lot in their work and I'm just not that precise to be honest. When I do use it, I use it if I am trying to dimension a panel to go into a groove. So if I need to put a, let's say a little, a little shelf and a dado for instance, so what I'll typically do is use my caliper to measure the exact width of the groove that I'm trying to fill and then I'll take my bore that I'm trying to fit into it over to my drum sander and keep sanding it down until it is within um, I don't know, tens of thousands of an inch of the required thickness and then I'll stop because I know I'm needing to actually sand the panel um, or finish prep the panel before it goes into the groove. So that allows me a little bit of leeway to actually sand the panel down to its final state and then fit into the groove perfectly. So cause if you were to just plane this down or, or um, drum sand it down to the exact fit here and then you went to go you know sand it smooth it out and finish it up for um, for finishing it's gonna be too loose so that's why I use the caliper but other than that it's really handy just to have around the shop for you know random precise measuring tasks and these are actually pretty inexpensive now the next marking thing I have here is a dovetail marker I use this for laying out all my dovetails it makes it really quick um, you can make these or you can buy them this is a uh, aluminum one from Veritas and you can buy these in all different angles. This is a 1 and 8 and that's the one that I use. Um, they make a 1 and 6 as well and they also make one that is just a square so it's called a saddle square. You can actually rest it on your workpiece and have it where it acts as a square instead of an angled um, layout tool. But I use this all the time. I make a lot of dovetails so this gets used pretty much every time I make a dovetail. So for layout work I would like to use a few different things. I have a mechanical pencil. I have these pretty much everywhere all over, all over the shop, but I still seem to lose them. But I like the mechanical pencil because you can kind of draw very precisely. Uh, whenever I don't need as precise a line as something I would get with a marking knife, I'll use the pencil. I also have a pen in the shop that I use for marking uh, things that I want to be able to be seen on camera or if I want to be able to see them better as I'm working on them. I also keep a lot of chalk around. I use chalk a lot just to make notes on my work pieces actually. So on my rough layout of my boards, I'll mark them with chalk. Um, I'll mark with chalk the panels just to know where they go in the workpiece, you know, left or right, up, down. I'll mark all that out with chalk. Um, really handy, I keep it in my, in my shop apron and I pick it out of there and boop, mark whatever I need. So the last measuring tool that I have to show you today, this is a good old tape measure <laughs> and a ruler. I have tape measures all over the shop, but I still can never find them. They are everywhere, but nowhere at the same time. <laughs> um, I really like the smaller ones. I had a 12 foot one, but I can't find it. I like that one the best. This is a 16 footer. Uh, I like the size because it's smaller. It can fit in your pocket and I don't really measure things longer than eight, maybe eight feet at the most uh, in the shop anyway. So having a shorter tape is nice because it's smaller and it's easier to hold on to and store. A nice big ruler like this, this is a four foot ruler. I use it quite a bit if I need to set up a length on the table saw for the cross cut sled. Uh, I'll put this right in the sled and then I can put my stop lock exactly where I need it. And I didn't mention it with the, when I talked about the combination squares, but I take the rulers out of these things all the time and use them just like this. So I should probably get a few actual rulers at some point but it's just handy enough just to pull that ruler right out of the combination square and use it like this. So that's it for the measuring and marking tools. If you have a suggestion for a future episode, please feel free to leave those in the comments below or send them to me on Facebook or Twitter. 
Uh, if you're not already following me over there on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, please head over there and follow me there as well. I post a lot of things on there throughout the week as well, and it's always great to see uh, what everybody else is working on in their shops. So thanks as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it as always. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today about the marking gauges or the marking knives or any of the marking tools or measuring tools, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'll also leave um, some links in the description if you're interested in taking a look at some of the products I have here on the bench. And until next time, happy woodworking.